Hi, my name is Dr. Matthew Weiner, and I'm a weight loss surgeon in Tucson, uh, Arizona, which is a really beautiful place if you haven't been there. Um, and I also have written a couple of books and have made a lot of YouTube videos over the years. And over, over the uh, years, people contact me frequently with questions about their experience with bariatric surgery and looking for more information. I've always kind of looked for the best way that I can interface with people so that these answers would be available to the, the greatest number of people. And I came up on this idea of allowing people to record their voice and send me a question so that we really recognize the personal element of, of everyone's experience after surgery uh, and send it to me and then I, I can listen to these questions and respond to them in a video and that way it's available out there for everybody over a, a long period of time. Um, so it's, uh, it's readily available not just for the individual person who asked the question but for probably the thousands and thousands of other people who have the exact same question. Um, so if you have a question that you'd like um, me to answer through video, you can go to my website, drweiner.com. You scroll down a little bit on the homepage and there's this area right here uh, and you click start recording and it'll allow, make sure you have ac give it access to your microphone. This will work on your phone or your computer. You record your question, you can actually play it to yourself to make sure that you like the way it sounds and then click send and it comes right to me and um, typically I'll, I'll try to get to these as quickly as I can uh, and make new videos. So, today's question comes from an anonymous user, and again, I, I, I like it when it's anonymous, because then we don't have any of these HIPAA uh, issues or uh, patient confidentiality issues. Doctor, I have a question for you. I am not quite four weeks post-op, and I have been stalled for two weeks in my weight loss. Is this normal? Question mark. I guess I don't have to say that, do I? <laughs> anyway, um, I was told that this might be normal, so I'm wondering if you can help me out because I'm getting very discouraged, even though my clothing is getting bigger. Thank you so much. Okay, so this person's four weeks out from surgery, and their weight loss is stalled. And so let's first just talk about how you lose weight after surgery. And a lot of people think it's like this, this straight line. But that's not how it works. It works like this. You plateau, you drop, you plateau, you drop, and it's this kind of slow and steady weight loss that when it's averaged out. But when we look at it on a day-to-day -day basis, there are long periods of plateaus which drive you absolutely mad, and I get it, followed by fairly rapid drops where you stabilize. Why exactly this is, I could make up a reason why I think it is, but that's all I'd be doing is making it up. We don't really understand. We don't have nearly the grasp of weight loss uh, that we think. Um, doctors, a lot of doctors out there still think that calorie in, calorie out is a definitive model. and It's just about behavioral change and that's it. And sticking to the, the math and everything works out without acknowledging the other uh, factors that contribute to this like your Meta, your metabolic rate, like your hormonal state, like the satiety hormones. Um, and bariatric surgery has really demonstrated that weight loss is far more complicated than we've ever thought. So this person has had a pretty significant stall at about four weeks. So let's just kind of walk you through that first year of weight loss and what are some, some landmarks you can look at that can help you. So a two week stall, it's a little long the one question I would have for this patient, which I'll mention in the next slide is, did you lose a lot of weight before surgery? Because often when people lose 20, 30 pounds before surgery, a lot, of pay, a lot of practices like mine will put people on this very low calorie diet for a week or two weeks. And that rapid weight loss that we, that we achieve from that before surgery often kind of inhibits our weight loss in the first month or so after surgery. So I think what I would say to this patient, just as an off the cuff, uh, you know, off the cuff answer, is if you lost a lot of weight before surgery, then this is totally normal and expected, and not cause for concern. This is just everything trying to catch up. If you didn't lose much weight before surgery, then this is probably a longer stall than we typically see. One week stalls in the first month, I see those. Two week stalls, that's a little bit of a longer period of time. Um, and you know, what can you do about those? Uh, I um, address that in a lot of other videos, 
Um, but it's essentially look for causes of the stall. Are you taking medications that cause weight gain? Are you consuming large doses of artificial sweeteners? Are you drinking things that contain calories besides your protein shakes, but any sugar-containing beverages like apple juice or orange juice, which people may think is healthy, but causes a tremendous amount of weight gain and will definitely cause a two-week stall even four weeks after surgery. So if we look at the time frame in that first year after surgery, I think there's a couple of really important landmarks that we should look for. The first is two months. And what we find is that people who are doing very well in their weight loss at two months out will end up losing more weight than average. So we can identify those people whose genetics result in a more favorable response to surgery. I'm gonna repeat that again. It's their genetics that are driving this favorable response. It's not their behaviors. It's not that they're doing everything right. In that first month or two, pretty much everybody's doing the same thing. But some people lose a lot more weight initially. Some people lose a lot more weight in total at the end of the year or so that they, they lose their weight after surgery. And it's genetics that is the primary determinant of it. Which genes? We don't know. But we know there are genes, this is familial, it's passed down in families. My own experience in my practice, I've seen this dozens and dozens of times where one family member does extremely well after the surgery, I operate on a first degree relative, spouses won't count, it's gotta be a genetic relative, brother, sister, parent, child, and they, they have the same really great response. And I've seen it the opposite way as well, where they don't lose as much weight as we would expect, even though they're doing everything right. So we can typically see what your genetic response is to surgery at around two months out by comparing you to other people. And it gets a little tricky in terms of predicting it, but you know, people who are losing a pound a day every day for the first two months, that's a, a fantastic response. And that person most likely is gonna have a really good long-term or total response. It's always a little tricky because bigger people will lose more weight than smaller people. So again, that's something you can talk to your individual surgeon about. And I'll show you a tool um, in just a second that can help give you a little bit of insight, at least for one year, not so much at two months. Four months is another important landmark um, that I use. And this is, this is, there's no evidence that I have that can support this. This is nearly my anecdotal observation. And I will tell you, it's not always right because some people lose weight kind of fast and furious and then stop at six months and other people are kind of more of a tortoise and lose their weight much slower um, and, and continue losing weight up until about 18 months or even two years out from surgery. But just in general, on average, you're gonna lose about half of the total weight that you will ultimately lose by the four month period after surgery. And that's for, in my practice, I have a visit that's typically around four months out. Um, and I use that visit kind of as a way to estimate how much weight I'm gonna find the patient's gonna lose at around a year. And a lot of times it's pretty accurate. Not always though, not always. And then one year is typically the time period where you've lost almost all the weight you're gonna lose. Every now and then, especially in patients who started at a higher BMI, we see continued weight loss in that second year. Um, I've even seen you know, 30 pounds of weight loss between months 18 and 24. Um, so you can lose more weight past this, but most people will lose almost all their weight by one year. For a lot of men, it's within six months. Men seem to lose weight a little faster than women, but they don't go for the same um, time period. And there's really very little difference in the amount of weight lost after these surgeries between men and women. Um, but if you look at six months, you'll see more weight loss in men than women because we tend to lose it a little faster. So this is a, a, a really valuable website and I hope the uh, Michigan Bariatric Surgery Collaborative isn't upset with me giving out this website, but it's pub this information is publicly available and I know based on their mission, um, the more people that have access to this information, I think the, the more they uh, would appreciate it. And this is something I use in my practice every single day. It's a database of, at this time in 2019, somewhere between 80 to 90,000 people that are in the database. Don't quote me on that number, but it's a very large number of people. And you can plug in your demographic information, plug in what surgery you've had, your starting weight, your starting height. Do it from your before surgery. This is meant for preoperative patients. So if you've already had surgery, you gotta use the numbers and your experience before surgery. 
You put in your medical problems like diabetes or high blood pressure, and it will predict for you the amount of weight you'll lose at year one, two, and three. If you had diabetes before surgery, but don't have diabetes anymore, you gotta check the diabetes um, checkbox there because again, it's looking at where you were on the day before surgery as a predictive tool. And I use this all the time because a lot of times I see patients who come and say, you know what, I haven't lost those last 20 pounds. And when I put their numbers in here, I find they've actually lost 20 pounds more than average. And so they're looking at it as these last 20 pounds, the weight they haven't lost. Um, instead of focusing on the weight they have, which is actually more than we would have expected, and they've had a great response. And I think talking to people and getting them to understand that these surgeries don't necessarily take you down to a normal BMI. In fact, that's, that's typically not what happens. Most people are still overweight after these surgeries. They're just much less overweight than they were before. So this tool, michiganbsc.org, is great. It's the outcomes calculator you wanna look at and it can predict how much weight you're gonna lose before surgery and it can be useful for you to assess yourself afterward to see where you are, where do you stand in the pack? Did you have a good response? Did you have a less than average response? Some factors that impact stalls are your starting weight. People who start at a very high weight tend to lose weight much more rapidly, have a lot fewer stalls than people who start at a relatively low weight. So if your BMI was 35.2 and you just barely qualified for surgery, then you're gonna have more frequent stalls than someone with a starting BMI of 60. Uh, the weight loss before surgery, like I mentioned, a lot of weight in the weeks before surgery often leads to these early stalls afterward. Your age, younger people lose more weight and they lose it faster after surgery than older people. So if you're older, then you're gonna be more susceptible to these stalls. And then finally, medications. Um, medications, there's a lot of medications out there that cause weight gain and getting these out of your, your um, medicine cabinet, if it's possible, is critical for your weight loss success. This is the decision you have to make with your primary care doctor or the prescribing doctor. This is not a, med a decision you can make on your own. So for more information on weight loss stalls and bariatric surgery in general, I think the two courses that, that will be helpful for you on drweiner.com is first this nutrition course, which is course number one, nutrition course number one, it's free, and it talks about the components that cause your set point to go up. These will be the factors that increase your chances of post-operative stalls. And then the four ways to get your set point to go down, and this is how you can get the most out of your weight loss surgery. And then bariatric course number two is really about that first month or so after surgery, the recovery phase, and, and how you um, do uh, getting back to normal eating and getting back to work and, and, and recovering from the surgery. Unfortunately, that's not free, but I think it's either 10 or $20. Um, it's, not, it's not a huge amount of money uh, if you need that information. Um, and then also I, my two books, How Weight Loss Surgery Really Works and A Pound of Cure, both available on Amazon. Uh, again, if you have any questions that you'd like answered in the video, feel free to come to, the, to drweiner.com and drop us a message and I'll try to get to it as quickly as possible. Thanks.